Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to our British Orienteering webinar on Root Gadget. Um, Simon Errington is here from Happy Hearts to talk us through um, Root Gadget for lockdown. There's a really good facility that I was unaware of before um, COVID-19 where we could set up events um, on Root Gadget and use them um, for, as an option for virtual orienteering courses. So that's what Simon's going to take us through for the next half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, at eight o'clock, obviously, if people, um, we're going to probably take a couple of minutes break so people can go out and um, do the clap for carers. Um, in terms of asking questions during this webinar, there, on your dashboard, on your screen, there should be um, a little questions box. So for those of you that haven't taken part in the Victorian Cheering webinar before, as Simon is presenting, you won't be able to ask questions out loud, but what you will be able to do is ask, ask them by typing in the question box and those questions will then come through to us. So feel free to type in questions if there's something you don't quite understand about what Simon's going, going through and I will then interrupt and ask him to clarify it. So do feel free um, to engage with us as the webinar goes on um, and any queries that might or, or hot questions that come up that you're raring to know the answer to straight away and then after he's finished there'll also be an opportunity for some more question and answers as well so for him to clarify some more bits and detail. Right so over to Simon then. Right thanks very much Natalie. Um, I shall try and bring up stuff in the right order so hopefully um, everyone can now see what I've got there. So this is an introduction to Root Gadget specifically targeted for the situation we find ourselves in. Um, as Natalie said, we, she phoned me up a couple of weeks ago and wanted to talk about various things, and this has emerged out of it. Um, let me briefly tell you what I think I'm going to cover. Um, it's going to be fairly fluid, um, and as Natalie said, if there are questions, please throw them in. Um, uh, we'll try and take a break at eight, and if it goes past eight, we, we'll, we'll continue there. Um, so the, the critical thing is that one of the options you've got with Root Gadget is to set it up with no results file, uh, and this came as news to a lot of people. Um, but equally, a number of clubs have been using this. Um, so what we can do is have a quick look at some examples of what clubs have already done. Um, and then I'll go through, firstly, how you go about setting it up, because there are some things you need to be aware of when setting up events with no results. And then as a user, what you can do in terms of adding your route and the analysis. Um, so firstly, let's just have a look at a couple of examples of what clubs have been doing and trying. Um, in terms of this. So I'm going to switch out to the famous live demonstrations, which hopefully will go um, according to plan. So uh, this is the Root Gadget Statistics page, which some of you will be familiar with, which lists recent events that have been put on. It's, uh, it's been fairly bleak recently because, of course, I used to get 10 events a, a week and we're now getting none. Um, but a number of clubs have put up events basically with no results to allow people to run whenever they want. So this South Yorkshire series here, um, the Southern Navigators event, two from Lakeland, and I've been talking to, I see Dave Walton's on the, on the um, here tonight, and we've been talking to them about setting up something else. So let's just have a look at what these clubs have done uh, and then see how it can be used. So we'll go to this um, Southern Navigators event just as an example. So this event, Solo at Pystock, what they've done is they've just put in two courses, a long and a short, um, they've set it up with no results. So what you can then do is, once it's been set up, anyone can go out, run their course, come back, and then draw or enter their GPS and just enter their re results here. So what that means is that's there now as a resource. Someone could, you, somehow you make the maps public. Um, you can either publish it as a PDF or whatever. A uh, person goes out, runs, and when they get back, they just enter their time, uh, and then we just generate what looks like a normal results list. Um, one of the things this is obvious it's much easier if you do this as gps rather than drawing the route um, there are no, going to be no split times it's purely going to be a line on the map so but you can see that seven people have been out and run this course over i think this has been up a, a month or so um, so these weren't even on the same day there was just people who've gone at some point decided to run the course and we've got all the standard root gadget functions to look at where they went and whatever so that's one example southern navigators have been using um, we said South, South Yorkshire have done something similar with a whole series of park events. So this is an example of Eccles Hall um, where they've got some courses up and they've got some people who've been out. Um, one of the Root Gadget super users is uh, 
on the blue course. So Peter Corvette is one of the people who um, he always puts his route in route gadget, always types lots of comments, and I have various email conversations with him, and he's been out. But again, anyone can go at any time run this course and then put their, their route in and compare it afterwards. Um, and just as the example of what we're doing within um, Hertfordshire Orienteering Club. So normally uh, within Hertfordshire Orienteering Club, every Tuesday night in the summer, we have a street based on open orienteering map. Uh, that's not happening at the moment, but instead what we've been uh, we're doing is that everybody's going out from their own house on the Tuesday evening, running around the streets, um, wherever they can get to locally to their house. And then we've put up a facility where anyone can come back and upload their routes. So you can see here we've got um, around the St Albans area, we've got various people running around all the roads of St Albans at various times and we're just consolidating all that into one um, set of results. Um, and this is an example using the post box map you can generate from open orienteering maps. So the challenge in the Harvard Orienteering Club on a Tuesday night is how many post boxes can you visit from your house in 45 minutes or an hour. So that's the sort of thing that you can end up producing. Um, let's go through how you do that. So we need to start off, um, let me just switch to this one. No, nope, not that one, sorry. This one. Um, setup. So the first point is, um, if at all possible, I'd recommend that you georeference any map you use. Um, the majority of people are probably going to end up uploading GPS files um, and georeferencing the map just makes life a lot easier. You don't have to fiddle around trying to fit anything. Um, but it's, it's not, that's, that's a recommendation for all maps at all events, but in this scenario it would really help people if you could georeference your map. Um, other than that, it's fairly straightforward. There's a, an, under the results upload that um, people will be familiar with, there's a button that says no results files, we'll just tick that. And then you can either use a course file or a start um, draw the course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a manager and, and go through setting an event up um, to give you an, an example of uh, how that goes. So if I go to uh, let's take this one and I shall log on here as the manager. Um, so if I log in here in the normal way, um, what we're going to do is go through an example of setting up an event. Oh, sorry, of setting up an event. So if we set up lockdown test result an event, we'll make that on the St Albans map, for example, that we've just seen. Well, this is normal. We set that up for today, and it's, uh, it's a training. So this is the critical bit here. This just tick no results file. And what that means is you'll just set everything up, but it won't have any results and people can add stuff later. Um, and then you come to courses. You've got two options. Uh, and we've seen both of them, I think, in, in, in the one example I've shown. The first option is just to use standard course files, the XML files that you'd use for a normal event, uh, as they will have done for that um, example in Sheffield, for example. Um, so you just upload all the courses and it will create all the courses and people can select whatever they want. Um, the alternative is where, I mean, for example, on this open orienteering map, there is no particular course. In that case, rather than uploading through this button, there's a button here which says draw course. And that just allows you, so we draw a lockdown one, that just allows you to say, well, my start is uh, somewhere here because that's where our house is and my finish is going to be here for my particular example and that's enough you can set that up as an event now with a start and finish um, the start and finish is only really relevant if people are going to draw their course in rather than upload gps because if you're drawing it you have to start and finish from there so if you live somewhere else it's a bit awkward um, if you're going to use gps it doesn't matter where the start and finish is the gps will just upload in the right place but as a minimum you need a start and a finish and then you can just create that event. There we go. So I've now created my new event. Um, and what I can do as a user now is just go in, pick my course, Simon, uh, 45 minutes or whatever it might be. Um, it, it's useful um, 
to, to put in, given that you don't have the normal arrangements and, and people are running this at different times, it's useful to do something like put the date and time, or the date you ran the course maybe in your comments. You can, uh, some, sometimes we've been putting the date in here, so you can just put the date against there to say when you ran it. Um, by 20, or you could put it as a separate comment, but it's just interesting for this sort of thing. That's something the clubs might want to publicise and try and encourage you, it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to know when people run particular courses. So what I could do is with the way this is set up, I can now draw, let's say I, I, I went around here and, and, and exactly the same way as normal. It's not, no, no, um, no controls to, to click to, uh, to, to visit, but just to show where I went, whatever. Um, there we go. And so uh, when I go next down here, down here. Yep. So there we go. And that's exactly the standard root gadget. I can save that. And then other people in future, we can, we can look at that. So there we go. I can show my route. I can do all um, and other people can add it in. So that's in essentially in, in 10 minutes, we've been through the whole process of, of setting the event up to, to what people can do. Um, and there's not a huge deal more to say. Uh, I, I think that the, the big issue that people need to, or, or that people may not have been aware of is that this can be done. Um, and that with a little bit of um, thought and getting some maps together, this is something where you can publish some courses or, or, or some maps. People can go out in their own time whenever they, wherever they um, have time when they, or wherever they are uh, within this area, uh, run a course, upload it. Um, and it gives you a facility which is, at least it feels like you're orienteering when you're out there running. I was running on Tuesday night and ran rather further than I expected, but we were, you know, navigating with a map, that's what it's all about, uh, and come back afterwards and um, go through things. Um, as I was uh, just talking to Natalie before we started, so the, the, the current Hertfordshire model is rather than our Tuesday night, we'd, we'd normally all go to one place and run around the streets. At the moment, what we're doing is we're all running from our own houses. Um, and then an, afterwards, eight o'clock on a Tuesday night, there's a there's a Zoom conference call where everyone chips in and says how many post boxes they ran to and how late they were and that, things like that. Um, so if I go back to, that's, that's the magic. If I go back out to, for example, this one, what you can see here um, is in the two weeks that we've been running this so far this summer, Here's all the people who run parts of St Albans. And you can see they've run a reasonable amount of East St Albans. We've got no one living over here yet. Um, and so that is where I ran this week. And that's where I ran last week. Um, and one of the challenges we're setting ourselves is how many of the roads we can run down in St Albans, but that's, that's a separate question. So I'm not sure there's a great deal more I can say um, about setting things up, I, I, I think people need to play with it, have a go. Um, and really, I, I'm, I'm, I've realised I've, I've shot through that rather fast, but uh, I, I think I've managed to cover everything I was, I was, I was trying to do in, in terms of explaining how to set things up. So it's really a question of any, any questions people might have. And, and <laughs> fire a few at you um first off simon yep. so um there might be some people in attendance that have not used or set up courses before and how yep. do they go about um getting their club set up to put on okay. courses um right so if yes yeah, if we go back to even further back to first principles so most clubs in this country have got a root gadget installation, either that's managed essentially through the um, through my root gadget site. And I've got probably 70 or 80 you know, clubs there, uh, or there's a handful of clubs that manage their own. Um, to, and someone within your club will be the person responsible for setting stuff up. That tends to be the way it works. Someone takes on responsibility, understands computers enough to want to risk it. Um, I can see many of them. So in they, the they, they, set up, they set up with a club file, and then on your root gadget page, each club has a file or a folder, right. and then each, every time yeah, each, 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 each club has a, a setup, and, and basically there's a, there's a manager who is able to log in and set up events for that club. So that the, 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 the crystal thing. 
Sorry. I was going to say we've had um, a lot of questions in as well on the geo referencing element. Okay. So, for example, yeah. we talked about being able to use geo reference maps or non geo reference maps. Right. Can you just talk us through the differences of yeah. having a okay. course with a non geo reference so, and one with a yeah, geo reference? Like example. Yeah, okay. Um, so, geo referencing just means that you've, you've got information associated with the map about how it actually relates to the real world in terms of location um, using coordinates that you can record through your GPS watch or whatever. Um, so a, a normal map might have X, Y coordinates and it's zero, zero in the bottom corner and you, depending on the size of the map, it's, you know, it's, it's 2000, 2000 up here. But georeferencing says rather than zero, zero to whatever, it, it essentially translates to a latitude and longitude. Um, and so you know exactly where it fits on the earth. And when you get a GPS recording, there's a ways of translating that GPS recording into those coordinates. And that allows me to draw on here exactly as um, in, uh, it relates to the real world. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you haven't got a geo-referenced uh, map up and you go out and complete a course on it, when you upload your details from your run to the software, it might map it in the incorrect position and right. you can move it, is that right? Yeah, that, that's right. So um, if, if the map is georeferenced and you upload a GPS file, then it will be, it will put your GPS file in the right place. So that subject to the caveat that the map's accurate. But in general, if I did it on this street map, for example, you will see that when I upload it, um, it's, it's a very good fit because this street map is derived from um, OpenStreetMap, which is pretty good. Um, if you're working on a normal or orienteering map, sorry, normal orienteering maps often have fairly poor base maps and the, and the alignment is not good. Um, and and that's, just, that's a separate problem. So um, what you need to do is the person making the map or someone in the club needs to adjust the map, the, the orienteering map, um, this process called georeferencing to align it correctly. And that's not always trivial because of distortions in the original maps. Um, newer maps will tend to have started from a georeference based material, so LiDAR or, or even some of the OS material now. Um, but some of the older maps, it's quite tricky to get to fit and, and you're almost fighting a losing battle. Um, but, but even if the map's not georeferenced, you've always got the option of um, manually adjusting it as part of the drawing your route. So you yeah, can so always. It shouldn't, put, it shouldn't put people off if they absolutely. haven't got a georeferenced no. map. No. Not, and, absolutely and not. And um, Brian has asked, Brian Bullen has asked, hi Brian, um, re-geo referencing maps. Yeah. Is this done in OCAD? Can it be done in Root Gadget? Uh, can it be done? No, it can't be done in Root Gadget. Um, Root Gadget is already complicated enough. Uh, the normal, yeah, for, for most um, standard orienteering maps, I would expect it to be part of the, 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 um, the OCAD generation. As I say, Nowadays, practically every map is going to start either from LiDAR or from a, a, some sort of OS background, and that will already be georeferenced. So you just need to make sure you maintain that georeferencing when you create the map. It's only the, the, the older files that have not been near that. So OCAD's one way. It's possible to georeference a piece of paper like this if you sit down and think about it hard enough and, and Google the right set of instructions. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but, but ge georeferencing is. At the end of the day, all it means is I've got a six numbers which tell me how to take this corner and this corner and turn them into latitude and longitude. Uh, and, and, and what about open orienteering maps? Because Andy Ellis has asked us, can we geo-reference open orienteering maps? Yes, so, so let, let's, one of the things I've not talked about, open orient, for those who've not found open orienteering map, go and have a look at open orienteering map. This is an absolutely fantastic project that um, Ollie O'Brien's put together um, over the past few years. So open orienteering map um, takes open street map as a basis. When open street map is this um, concept that there is a, a, a map of the whole world that has been generated by whoever is interested in generating maps. And combines it into this fantastic background map. Um, and Ollie's taken that open street map material, which is essentially well, subject to certain license terms, essentially free to use, and he's converted it using um, various transformation processes into an equivalent orienteering map. 
and you can go anywhere in the world and generate an orienteering map. So what we're looking at here is St Albans, and I can see it in what's called pseudo, if I turn that one on. Um, or, so there's, there's various options, um, but we, we tend to use these for Streeto. Um, so this always used to be, it, what, what you get out of this is a PDF to take away. So if I, let me generate this. So um, there you go, let's, let's generate my map and I can draw some controls on that. I can draw start and finish. So, so this, if, if for those, as I say, for those who've not played with Open Orienteering Map, go and play with it. It's really fantastic. Um, it allows you to generate, well, we use it for all our Streeto events. I can put controls on like this. We tend, you know, lamppost, post box, whatever. Um, and the, the beauty of that is that you can literally do it anywhere, so you don't have to be constrained yeah, by where yeah. you've already got so, the map. So, so this is a fantastic way of generating the maps. Um, I, I would demonstrate another fantastic feature, which is this post box feature, which is it goes away and it looks up all the post boxes on that map and adds them. And that is amazing. Is, How could you do that? Well, uh, well, the, the problem I've got is that I've just raised an error with Ollie. I think he's managed to break it in the past couple of days because I was using it OK on Tuesday and it's not working tonight. So I've asked him to have a look at that. But all, all these maps you're seeing of St Albans, these are all post boxes auto generated. So he's looking up at, again, an open source um, post box reference to generate all these post boxes. Uh, so you can good, because actually, yeah, because on the post boxes, there's actual a there's actually a national website because I've done a course with post boxes before. Yeah. It's quite yeah. an easy way of having something permanent that's there that you can yeah. quickly set up courses to. Yeah. So there is actually a website that lists all the post boxes near you or near near an area. Yeah. So you can actually so, find those things. Yeah, so ho hopefully all you'll manage to correct whatever's gone wrong in, uh, with this and you'll be able to generate your own post boxes. But that's, as we say, that's what we use for our Tuesday night events. So is that, um, is that geo The question we started talking about geo yeah. um, So there is now a function that Ollie's added. Um, sorry, I've now got rid of the wrong button. I can't see what I'm doing. I need to get that down so I can. See. So I've, I've got a load of stuff in what, exactly where I wanted to look on my screen. Um, yeah, so when, when you've generated your map, um, if I save and get it, so it, it generates a, a PDF map uh, which you can download. But the other thing it does is it generates other files. Um, there's some files that he's now generated for map run input, which I think may be part of next week's discussion. But for, in terms of root gadget, the critical ones are you can get a JPEG, which is what you can use as the map to go into root gadget. And you can get a JGW. So JGW is the, is the georeferencing world file for that JPEG. So this is just a, a, a picture file, image file that you can use for the map. And this is the critical piece of information which says how that piece of paper relates to the real world. So if I look at that, you'll see this is just six numbers. Um, if I could see them behind whatever. There we go. Those are my six numbers. And all that's saying is this is this is the numbers you need to be able to transform that piece of paper to real coordinates that a GPS watch understands. Um, so. If, if you're ever using OpenStreetMap and Root Gadget, that get, make sure you take the JPEG and the JGW and use those as your map files. And that means that any map from Open or Interior Map going into Root Gadget, going into anywhere, will be correctly georeferenced, and therefore your GPS route will upload absolutely correctly. Um, okay. And, on, and Andy, who's obviously really, really keen on the postbox idea, has hit me with another question: Is that is there a way to get rid of the post boxes that don't actually exist? Um, it's a very interesting question because, yeah, th there's a number of post boxes which are duplicated or which are in the wrong place. Um, I, I, the only way I can see, I, Oli will be picking it up from some open, openly available API. Uh, and I guess there must be a feedback loop to say to that person, this, is, this information is wrong, but I don't know what it is. Um, I, can I admit you, it's a bit can annoying when control on. Can you just not put control on? Well, on what, yeah, I, what, I, what we've done, you, I, I'm pretty certain that even when it's generated, the post box is automatically, you can still, uh, well, you, you, what you do is you delete it manually yourself and put it in the right place. It's a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the real question is, we'd have to find out how you go back to the source of this information and say it's wrong. Uh, and I don't know how easy or viable that is. Um, but 
yeah, just just to make the point, if we go back to, I'm oh, sorry, um, I've got another little. I cannot manage the tech where the thing covers up the corner of the screen I need to see. I'm going to scroll through to that one again. Um, yeah, just just to, just to show you, one of the things we generated um, is to, for, for our Tuesday nights, we thought, well, let's go even wider. So this is generated, this is St Albans in this corner, Hatfield, Welling Garden City and Harpenden. Um, did I, I mean, in the end, I didn't add the post boxes because I rediscovered there were several hundred on here and I just caused yeah. so much confusion. But uh, yeah, uh, certainly for the St Albans one, we've got, I think, of the order of 100, nearly 100 just in. So all of these circles are automatically generated post boxes from that function, which hopefully will be working again very soon. And that just gives you a really quick way of, of saying here's a feature for people to go and run around. It would be really nice if there were other things like um, the green utility cabinets for, for um, telecoms and things or lamppost numbers, but I don't think that's, that's viable. But um, uh, the other slight problem you get is it's okay in, in the main centre of town, but we were running around this northeastern corner on Tuesday night and the post boxes are slightly too far apart for, um, for most people. Um, but anyway, it, it's it's a very easy way to generate events that people can go and try for themselves. Um, and as I've shown, going from the open orienteering map into Root Gadget, everything's now there to allow you to, to do that very easily. Uh, and then the other thing is, just to finish on, on uh, is that this open orienteering map, when you generate it, it generates a, um, a reference number. Um, let me show you the example back on here. So down in this corner, let me turn the brightness up on the map. Another thing that David Robertson's just uh, just uh, said is that obviously Google Street View is a very useful tool as well, isn't it? Because you can actually yeah. see lamppost numbers and various things that you yeah. wanted to check without actually having to go there. You can yeah, pop that, that, that's on. Exactly right. So, yeah, so if I'm setting a course like this, I will tend to try and do it. So I, we, we take the post box as a starter and then we put it, we fill in the gaps with things like lampposts. And the way you do that is you go into Street View and you see what you can find. Um, so yeah, that's that's exactly right. That a mix of this and street, you can plan things very easily. I mean, all, all this is stuff we had been doing over the past five or ten years. Uh, well, maybe not ten, given the technology, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I think it, with, with what's about to emerge, maybe get wider use once people are aware of it. Yeah, what I was just going to say about this, um, the, these maps. One of the things is when you when you generate the map, it generates a, a, a number in this bottom corner. Um, and that's all you need to publish to people because they can then go back onto this website, put that number in there, and it will regenerate the map for them, and they can download the PDF themselves from this website if they wanted to. So either you could distribute the PDF, or you could say just go and get it from the website. Um, okay. Well, we have so, got quite quite a few more questions, exciting well, questions yeah, I was, I was to go say, through. But I think we have a break uh, for the clapping okay. for the carers. Right. So where should we meet back at five past eight, something like that? We'll meet back at five past, and I've got a lovely list of questions, but if anyone else has right. got any, take this opportunity to type, to type more in, and we'll do another 10 minutes after the break just to go through a few more um, exciting answers okay. for you. So see you back in a couple of minutes. Right, are we still here? <laughs> We've gone quiet. No, no, just just now. Just now. Okay, fine. Because yeah. if someone hasn't got up and moved, then so, I don't know what they're seeing yet. Yeah. I, I, you... I don't know what you're seeing. Oh, right. Come have a look. <laughs> I just know I've been put stuff on it. It's always in the wrong place. <laughs> Thank you. 
Simon, you were pleased to know we've got a really exciting two techie related questions for me that I don't even understand. So I'm just going to fire them out in a minute and hopefully you'll understand them. We'll, we'll, I'll take anything. <laughs> we'll just wait another moment just to make sure yeah. everyone's. We've still got a lot of people on. Of course we have. It's so exciting. Question <laughs> <laughs> to talk about post boxes and the open O map, just the uh, ideas well, you can yeah, use that's, a that's map of anywhere. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a map I'm going to show. But I'll, I'll, I'll issue a challenge. But anyway, we've got lots of got questions to get to as well. We do. We'll start with a very simple one from Hilary from Knock. Hi, Hilary. Um, oh, right. Just ask. She's just asked about printing off a map. I didn't know if there was a quick easy. You could just ask that one. How do you print off a map from Root Gadget? So you set one up when you want to go out and you want to, you know, print it off and go out and do it. Okay. So from Root Gadget, it's really not a printing option. 
Um, I, I think if we're talking about setting things up like this, the club will have to come up with some way of distributing the map. Um, PDF is clearly the best and people print it themselves or you somehow generate a, a, a set of maps that people can collect in some way or post out. Um, but root gadgets, not set, you're, you're not going to get a, a good enough um, quality out of root gadget and it's not set up to do that. So I, I, I think it's up to clubs to come up with some other way. And, and printing yourself is probably the best way if you can make the, the necessary PDF or, or whatever available. I mean, as we've seen so from the... So you create your map on your root gadget system? Yeah, I think, to... I think you need to treat that as, as a sort of a, a side thing. Somehow you will either from open or interior map, you've seen you can generate the PDF or from um, from OCAD or from even from um, Purple Pen or, or Condes, you can generate course maps in PDF format. And, and that's probably the best way to distribute stuff. So either yeah, clubs so... somehow print themselves or distribute a PDF. Yeah, export your map and Sorry. print it off. Yeah, so you can't uh, yeah. so export the map, print it off. You can't. There's not a print function in Root Gadget, so not, you can't. Not in Root Gadget, it. and it, Root Gadget's not set up to to provide the quality that you need. And, and there are licensing issues as well. We have to be careful of. So, right. I think the clubs will need to come up with a way for that. So um, we've had a question from Helen about, or do you want to carry on with your map exciting map demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is that Helen downstairs? <laughs> it might be. I, I, yeah. I, just, I, I just want to throw my favourite part of um, open orienteering map in. So this is a map of, of um, well, that's the challenge to people. Um, I published this as a question about five years ago in a blog I wrote, and no one ever answered it. So that is a most fantastic street area, as you can see. It's in the world version of open orienteering map, and I'd be very interested if anyone else knows where that is. But that is some exotic place where you could hold an orienteering race um, that you can find if you search hard enough in, uh, in open orienteering map. But it just struck me as a fantastic place for Streeto. You could get really lost in there. But has anyone got the first clue where it is? It looks, Sorry, in, America with all the, it looks in America with all the um, symmetrical well, lines. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Which we shall leave, leave that for a post session challenge yeah. and send it. Yeah, that, that's your. <laughs> After the session, we'll put a press release out with an image and see if anyone can guess yeah, where I'll it is. Print that screen now. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll generate a proper orienteering map for it and send it to you. Sorry, that's completely oh, someone's already of... Someone's already had a guess, but I don't want to spoil it for everyone. A couple of people have already had guesses, but I don't want to spoil it for everyone else. So we'll send it around afterwards for everyone to have a look at it and have some fun. Okay, so Bob Dredge has also, has also mentioned something um, really helpful. He said there may be merit on doing a future webinar perhaps with Ollie O'Brien on open um, uh, yeah, on I, I, map and... I, I did consider trying to get, get Ollie involved tonight, but I never got round to it. Um, he's, I think he's had, got other things on. Uh, he, I've just seen he's given a presentation on... Um, he, he's into bike share um, usage schemes, and he's just given a big presentation at a conference on um, bike share in lockdown. So he's, he's uh, I think, quite busy on other things. <laughs> OK, well, we'll see if we can make that come about, Bob. Don't worry, we'll, we'll see yeah, what we but, can do. But Ollie's definitely the person to get involved. In terms of more questions, Rick um, from Northern Ireland or in Turin, hello Rick, um, has said in terms of being a manager of Root Gadget, so you yeah. mentioned that generally a club person yeah. who's nominated to, um, you know, be the coordinator for the club, but if you have a few enthusiastic people from within, within a club, for example, can anyone become a manager? Can anyone be set up? The, the, the way I have got it set up is each club has a single username and password and they do with that what they want within the club. As I say, most clubs take the approach that one person does it, but I know some clubs pass it around and say it's your event, you can sort it out. So I, I think the thing to do is contact your um, whoever's responsible in the club and say, can I get involved or can I have a go or whatever. Um, but it, yeah, we can, we can I, I don't that. actually have a central record of who's doing what. I just know clubs have got access to it. And, and they manage it as, as they want. Okay, I see. Um, we've had a few questions on various exciting file names and things about how to do it. So I'm just gonna <coughs> crack on with the questions. So someone said, when you were loading the courses, yeah. um, it was quite quick. So were the courses you loaded IOF XML? Right, yeah, so when you're setting events up, uh, we're back here on the setup screen. Um, the, the normal way you do it for most courses is you, you, you click the browse button and you'll pick up, as I said, an, an XML 
So there's an iOS file specification, but what course files look like, um, it's generated by all the course planning software, uh, Purple Pen, Condes, OCAD, and you'll just use those. So if you want courses in this sort of setup, you can just use that course file from your course planning software. Um, the example I showed didn't use a course file. So rather than a course file, we've got this um, cut down facility just to draw a course. Um, so the, the, the one I showed just drew a start and finish to allow you to go wherever you want on that map. So even without a course file, with no results, you can generate a course with a start and finish on a, on a map wherever you want, and that will generate something which you can then put roots into. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's the key thing, isn't it? That it's it's courses that you can set up without the need for SI results, without the need for yeah. actual competitive competition. Yeah. So um, it, it's very much what you can set up, and then people can go and do individually, locally, and still get that competitive um, edge. Because yeah. we understand that um, you still want to go out and run quicker than potentially other people, and hopefully the stuff that we're going through today will give. Um, clubs and members the opportunity to set stuff up so hopefully when the lockdown is released slightly more we can be best placed to suddenly go right you know here's some um you know and publicize them more at the moment we're obviously constrained in the situation that we are in with no mention activities um and another question that's come in just as i'm on that topic is a question about uh british and hearing insurance so thanks for that roger um is this all without British or interior insurance and have maps and activities um, been registered? Um, I think I'll answer that question in that for both Root Gadget and Map Run, if you were to use the software to run an actual event, which is what some clubs have done previously, then it would have British or interior insurance. But in the current climate, um, any activities and courses that are set up will not be um, need registering or have any British or interior insurance. If down the line, when the lockdown is reviewed and released and we're able to resume our events and activities, then the question will be answered slightly differently in, in the same way that it is with Map Run, in that you can run a, an official event using what you've created on Root Gadget and Map Run, and the answer will then be different. But at the current time, no, there's no British or interior insurance for any, anything that is undertaken by individuals is undertaken at their own risk. Um, and that's a, that's a key point. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, so back to the exciting um, tech questions. Uh, we've got <laughs> Dave Walton. Thanks, Dave. Says, do you know what the GFW file produced by PP is, please? Is this a geo reference file? Uh, yes, it will be a geo reference file for whatever the file format. Um, I'd have to have a look exactly, but it would, yeah. If, if you don't open it and if it looks, if it's just got six numbers in, it's a geo referencing file. But um, okay. it, it might, if it was GFW, um, I'm just, it might just be a GIF file geo referencing. Let me just check. Uh, if I go into Ellenbrook, uh, the yeah, GFW is a georeferencing file for a GIF, so it's just a, a, a different um, image format. So rather than JPEG and, and JGW, it's if you've got you know a GIF file, it's a JGFW, but it's exactly the same thing. That's the file that georeferences the the image, which is in the GIF file. And Joseph's asked, um, hi Joseph's asked a few questions on the open orienteering map. So obviously you said yeah. about you can bring up open orienteering maps to put courses anywhere you want. Um, yeah. And obviously you flick through that quite quickly. Um, because there's not, there's, he said, is there only street view? But there's not, there's other layers, isn't there, that you can click on and use? Yeah, let, let me go back to there. Um, and different layers will be useful in different um, scenarios, so whether it's urban or rural. So there's a yeah, thing the, you can through. Simon will probably show you. The option up in the top left here. So, so the, the one we normally use is the street view, which is basically the black and white. Um, there's a sort of enhanced street view. Um, I think so that's just taking the railways out because we had some issues in central London where there were too many railways to get in the way. 
Um, but but the other option is, is this thing which tries to be closer to the IOF colour standards. Um, it's very dependent on who's mapped what, how. So, for example, you can see here that some people have been in and put some urban buildings in and other people have left them free. Um, the, the, the slight problem with the open orangery map is you're dependent on the quality of the map that we've got. Um, but then yeah. the other thing is that one of the things you can do is if you don't like it, you can go into open street map and make the changes yourself. So a number of the paths local to this area are paths that club members have put on as a result yeah, of running Peter, events. Peter, you know, Peter, hello, Peter. I've actually asked that question. Um, he's asked yes. about um, can anyone make changes yeah. to right that's a whole new seminar on its own so the the, the source driving this is this um, thing called open street map which is a worldwide map generated by everybody um, you can register as a user of that and you're then allowed to edit the base material uh, and it's fairly you know it's, it's a horrid concept that anyone can go and edit it there's some sort of quality checks but fundamentally it's get on and do it if you feel like it uh, and that, for example, is where all these trees have come from. Uh, this certainly wasn't me putting on all these trees, but somebody's been putting all of the trees in my park. <laughs> and I can actually go back. And, so in OpenStreetMap, if you register as an editor, you are allowed to make edits. And as I say, um, it's quite common following events that we hold that people will go back and add the things that are missing, or as part of planning their event, they will add on the paths that they want because they, you know, they're new since the thing was last updated or whatever it might be. So yeah. So open orientary map is entirely driven from OpenStreetMap, and OpenStreetMap anybody can register as an editor and make changes to whatever they want, um, and that's how you go about it. So uh, I think uh, one of the final questions is kind of running related. So Helen's asked a question about park run courses, uh, uh, right, and, yeah. okay. and I would uh, ask a similar question as a runner: can so can you know, can we put on courses that are 5k, for example, and you, you, can, you can put on whatever you want. Um, the, the example that we're, we're going to give that, that Helen found out about this morning, she said, oh, that's interesting, is um, one of the things we've set up within Hertfordshire and Turing Club is we've put a number of our local park runs in because we've got maps of most of them. I mean, most most of the parks are already mapped. So this is Ellenbrook, which is our local park run. Um, so we've just set it up and people, after they run their park run, can upload their GPS route. Um, and you can see that a number of us have, but mainly David, because he's a complete nutter. Um, and then what you can do is that everybody has run that park run. Uh, everybody has run that park run. We can just, uh, guess what? I can't see what I want because that's in the way again. Um, I, I can just replay park run. This is quite entertaining. Um, and Virtual you can work out the park run goes in Ellenbrook. So this is people, you can see we've got a nice little short loop first and then we do a big loop of the park um so yeah you can just put in each week's park run like that and, and see how you compare so i could just if we take david as an example let's see how his really fast time compares with his slow time and you can see you know where he, how far behind he was and whatever and with the yeah, standard quite exciting so you can yeah, yeah set got got virtual park runs almost yeah that's that, that's essentially what we're doing like with the, the function i showed last time i talked about root gadget was i'm sorry I'm, I'm turning the wrong things on but with this function where you can um speed color how, how fast you're going and so you can then work out where you're going slowly where you're going fast so you can see we've got this really fast finishing straight which is a dead flat old taxiway from a runway you can see the last k uh, and it gets a bit slower um further out in the mud um, but so all, all the root gadget features are there and you can just keep adding different different things. Um, it's just that park run was one of the interesting things that people have been doing. So we, we've got a number of those set up. But yeah, that's just pure running. But again, you can see you can run virtual races. You can analyze how your route was. Um, I think if I bring my route up here, let's just get rid of those. So if we do that, I'll turn the map down because it's too dark to make the point. But if you look at this, this is this is the park run. You can see the start's dead fast. This corner's really slow. And you can see every time I go around a corner, it's getting a bit slow. This is a really dodgy corner. And it emphasizes the problems you get. It's it's not running in a straight line that's difficult, it's running around corners. That's very yeah, that's very interesting. That's the thing with um, the athletics that running yeah. people would like to see. <laughs> so well, I think, you, you, I think, sorry, go on. 
in, in terms of that setup, I think the only thing we've actually set up is yeah, the start and the finish. So again, I, I drew that course the, the way I showed you. Just click the draw course button and draw the start and finish. Off you go. And you could do that with um, courses that aren't part one courses. Again, you can do it with any. Yeah, I mean any run. Um, I think another of the things we've got in this one is we used to do oh, they still do they, they do a tuesday night run in welling garden city where we've got a big number of people um so they've just got a standard route that they, they've got a standard route somewhere and they've just you know over, over the number of weeks the, the group that go out running have put in their routes and you can see and you can analyze and you know again replace how fast they're going but I'm a member of, just, of Athletics Club as well, and one of the questions we've been having is when um, lockdown does get released more, and I appreciate um, having the controls and having orienteering courses, but obviously we know that one of the main things about us as clubs is doing our social runs as well as groups, and I think um, for people to have a think about how they can maybe um, put out just distance runs and encourage their members yeah. to go and do training runs, it's also an opportunity to keep people encouraged in actually doing their training runs as well as, as a traditional orienteering event. So I think that's actually quite um, quite a revelation yes, as well. So, and, and, and I, I think that the thing that this, I mean, things like Strava have got similar functions, but you can do the replay against other people or against yourself over different weeks to see, you know, wh where am I up on last week? Where am I down? How, I, how do I compare? Am I going too fast, too slow, whatever it might be? So it's, it's, it's the functions there, just people need to have a play and see what they can do with them. Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll finish on that as, a, as an ending and that what we'd encourage you to do is to, like Simon says, log on, have a go, have a, we'll, we'll summarise all the questions that have been asked during the session, as well as sharing the video recording of the webinar. So for those that have missed it or have missed certain bits of it, you can log back on. We'll send that with the answers to all the questions that have been listed. But once you've been on, had a go, had an experiment, and if there's anything else further that you would like clarification on, then please do send it through to me, and then I will then obviously um, send on to Simon as, as required. Um, but also want to say thank you for all the show-offs who answered where Simon's map was, who answered that they knew where it was because they watched him do it during the break. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cheeky people, you know who you are. <laughs> well, hopefully they all agree. <laughs> It's, it's eminently guessable yeah. as an expected so, yeah. place. Thanks a lot, Simon. We appreciate it. Okay. And um, okay. thanks, everyone, for joining us. And for those that are logged on, uh, registered for next week, we've got a, a webinar on Map Run app as well. And that's next Tuesday at the same time. So hopefully I'll see some of you there. <laughs> thanks, Simon. We go. We're done. That's four from you, you know. We should have a permanent boff out, but we've got a permanent boff out. You can't say anything <laughs> rude because people are still logged on. You can't say, it's great to with it for people to log on. But no, like enjoy that. Enjoy there was a lot of people left at the end. Sorry? Yeah, I said I enjoyed it, especially the bit about being able to map, uh, you know, tr uh, potentially map training runs with other people and stuff. That adds a whole other dimension to it yeah. um, because I think when lockdown is released, um those are the kind of things that that you can't yeah. necessarily do on the map run app um so that adds a different dimension no, it's, i think it's a different thing altogether yeah mm -hmm. all right well i'll let you go then but much appreciated okay. and, um, right. thank you see you again yeah. have a good evening bye <laughs> goodbye well, that one uh leave yeah.